Hi, my name is Chris. I'm one of the uh, traditional chief residents. This lecture is about basic ECG interpretation. Uh, I put this lecture together with Dr. Rosenfeld, one of the professors of cardiology. So to start off with the ECG, it's very important to know what the normal waveforms and uh, the segments are called. So first we have the P wave, which represents the depolarization of the atria. And basically you can think of depolarization as initiation of the electrical impulse to cause the muscle to contract. Then we have the QRS complex right here, which represents the depolarization of the ventricle. So if the initial portion of this waveform is downward, it's termed a Q. If it's upward, it's termed an R. If there's a downward followed by a upward uh, deflection, uh, then we term that the S wave. And then repolarization is the of the ventricles is the T wave. So you can think of repolarization as the uh, ventricles getting ready for another electrical impulse. So then if we look at the straight lines on an ECG, the these are uh, termed the segments. So the PR segment is uh, between the P wave and the QRS complex. The ST segment is between the end of the QRS complex and the beginning of the T wave. And then an often overlooked segment is the TP segment, which is right here, right after the T wave but before the next P. This is very important because is the only true isoelectric point on an ECG. And whenever you're looking at ST segment changes, such as an ST segment elevation or depression, you're comparing it to the TP segment because this is isoelectric. So another important part about interpreting an ECG is understanding the leads. So the leads are basically dictated by the anatomy. So first we can think of two sets of leads. There's the limb leads, and then there's the precordial leads or the chest leads. So starting out with the limb leads. So first we can kind of think of a, a model of the heart. So here I'm gonna draw out the uh, limb leads first. So here we have the right atria and the left atria. And then we have the ventricles, which come next. So the ventricles are the bottom of the heart um, and they're usually the workforce. So we can see right here, here's the septum. And here is the right ventricle and the left ventricle. So if we just imagine a imaginary point at the middle of the heart, so here to zero degrees, we have the lead one. And then at 60 degrees, we have lead two. At 90 degrees, we have lead ABF. And at 120 degrees, we have lead three. And at uh, negative 30 degrees, we have AVL. Okay. And then here at 270 degrees, we have AVR. This is usually used for more complex arrhythmia interpretation. Um, so those are the limb leads, so zero degrees. 60 degrees, 90 degrees, 120 degrees, 270 degrees, and negative 30 degrees. So then if we imagine the uh, front of the chest with the precordial leads, and drawing the model of the heart, We can imagine these leads coming out of the uh, plane of the paper, so kind of coming towards you. So first we have at the right sternal border, we have V1. Then at the left sternal border, we have V2. A little bit over from that, we have V3. At the midclavicular line, we have V4. And then a little bit over from that, we have V5. And then at the mid-axillary line, we have V6. So if you think about the anatomic grouping of these leads, 
as you can see, the um, the arrows are pointing downward for 2, 3, and AVF. So these are the inferior leads. Then for AVL and 1, these are more lateral, but they're actually called the high lateral leads. Looking at V1 and V2, they overlie the septum. So these are the septal leads. V3 and V4 are the anterior leads. V5 and V6 are the lateral leads. So thinking about normal conduction, if we look at lead 2 as a very good example, um, we're going to have conduction starting here in the high right atrium, and it's going to depolarize the right atria, then it's going to depolarize the left atria, then there's going to be a slight pause in the AV node, which is going to be about right here, and then uh, it's going to move downward, um, and the summation of the vectors is going to move down lead 2. So basically in lead 2, the way that the waveform should look is something like this. So here we have we have the P wave, which we can see right here. And then the summation of the vectors for the QRS complex is going to be mostly directed down lead two. So if something moves down an arrow, it's going to be a positive deflection. So we see predominantly an R wave. And then the repolarization, we're going to see a positive T wave. If we look at V1, so again, remembering that rule that if, if something is uh, is moving down the is moving down the vector, that uh, it will be positive. So for V1, we'll have a little positive. Uh, we're just going to represent the depolarization of the right atria. Then, as we depolarize the left atria, it's going to be moving away. And then as we go through the septum, there's going to be a slight left-to-right depolarization. It's going to cause there to be a positive. And uh, then uh, as we move through here, there's going to be a tug-of-war between the vectors of the left atrium and the right atrium. So the left atrium is more massive because it has to pump to the entire systemic circulation. And the right atria sorry, right ventricle, just has to pump to the lungs, which are much closer to the heart. So between these two, the left ventricle will win, and you'll get predominantly an S wave. And then you can get the T wave. So you'll notice that as you move to V6, V6 is more parallel to the left ventricle. So there will be predominantly an R wave. So one thing that we can see is that as we move from V1 to V6, there's going to be a progression from an S wave being the predominant waveform to the R wave being the predominant waveform. So here's an example of a normal ECG. This is very similar to what we just went over. So as you can see, we have the um, we can see that in lead two we have predominantly an R wave, and this again is because the uh, vectors of the ventricle are going to be directed at approximately 60 degrees when they're added together. And we can see in V1 there's this little R wave that represents the depolarization of the septum, and then the depolarization of the ventricles is going to be represented by this, this S wave. Remembering that, that uh, because of V1's anatomic position, that uh, the left ventricle will win that tug of war uh, with the vectors. It will be directed in the opposite direction of V1. So you'll have predominantly an S wave that will represent the depolarization of the ventricles. So as you move, you can see between V3 and V4, you have a, you have a change, which is uh, something called the R wave progression. So you see that there's an R wave transition where you go from having predominantly an S wave in V3 to predominantly an R wave in V4. And by the time you get to V6, there is uh, only an R wave that you can see here. And we see again P wave here is going to be positive in lead 1, positive in lead 2, and positive in, in lead 3. And then if we look at V1, the upstroke is going to represent the depolarization of the right atria, and the small down, 
downstroke can represent the depolarization of the left atrium.